All right, I'm going to call the meeting order. Sorry. If we're all ready to go. Uh, item two, pursuant to the state executive order to temporarily suspend the in-person presence requirements and eliminate the limitation on remote access to the Illinois Open Meetings Act due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The board is suspending the usual electronic attendance and voting section of the board's bylaws and will allow board members to attend this meeting remotely and fully participate uh, remotely. So glad I memorized that. Uh, <laughs> moving on to item three, uh, would Becky please call the roll? Yes. Barbara Bennett. Here. Beth Scheid. Here. Gloria Yen. Here. Jane Williams. Here. John Thies. Here. Lupe Mejia. Here. Michael Weissman. Here. Sharice Hersey. Here. And we're missing Mark Pelmore. Are there any uh, additions, corrections, modifications to the agenda? Seeing and hearing none, uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. Is there a second? second. There's a second. second. Discussion? Uh, okay, all those in favor? Becky, please call the roll. Give me just a minute to write down first and seconds. Okay, ready. Barbara Bennett? Yes. Barbara, Beth Scheid? Yes. yes. Gloria Yen? Yes. Jane Williams? Yes. John Thies? Yes. Lupe Mejia? Yes. Michael Weissman? Yes. Cherise Hersey? Yes. Are there any opposed? I think we were unanimous. Uh, motion carries. Uh, public comment, item six. Is there any public comment? Oh, just a minute. My screen, oh, rats. I went to look and I have troubles with one of my monitors blinking out on me every now and then and I moved it over here and it has blinked out. I don't um, see anybody that's even in attendance except well, us. You, I usually check, there it goes. Okay, just a minute here. Okay. Sorry, we're having technical difficulties. I wonder if I can bring it back. It's okay. I usually check, I have to check the admin on um, the administrative. Do you, you um, need me to come over and check my email? Well, let me see if my, my screen keeps blinking out when I bring it. I'm wondering if I can, yeah, you're going to have to because I can't. Okay. We'll just play Where's Waldo with Donica's cat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a monitor that occasionally gives me hassles and it will not, I moved it over to that monitor to try and not have it on top of you guys. And when I try to open it, it blinks out on me. So and we give people up till 6.45 um, before the board meeting to put in comments if they want to in the administrative um, email. And so none, okay. All right. Okay, so we'll there let, is no, no public comment. We'll then. let Celeste get back in the situation yes. before we move Thank on. Thank you, Celeste. You're welcome. There she is. And now she's the runner. Good job, Celeste. Just now. Okay. Uh, there being no public comment, let's move on to item seven presentation 7.1. Uh, Amanda. Hi, everybody. So um, I'm here to talk about the strategic plan. Um, after almost a year of not talking specifically about the strategic plan with me, I'm here to give you an update about what's been going on since um, the board approved the plan in December of 2019. And you all haven't heard me talking about the plan, but there's definitely been a lot going on with the plan. And so that's what I wanna talk about today. Um, you know, one of the board's goals was to make sure this was really a plan that we used and that was very integrated into everything that we did, that we do at the library. And I think one way the board sees that every month is just through the director's report. Um, Celeste uh, has, we've organized our report that Celeste gives you by the strategic directions and goals that we're working towards. You regularly get to see um, the different activities that help the help us um, achieve those goals in our plan. So, um, we wanted to give you a little more detail about what's been happening. And right after um, the board adopted the plan, actually before the board adopted the plan, we had started a process of creating activity plans at the department level. 
So every manager um, went through all the data really that we've gathered and started to align things that they wanted to do over the next two to three years um, with the different goals. And we have this massive spreadsheet that we started that has tabs for each of the departments. And we had um, had department level meetings and, and gotten pretty far along with that process when COVID hit, of course. So that did derail us for a while, um, understandably so. And at the same time, I would, fee I would say that I think we all kind of kept going with those things. We might not have had the documentation that we wanted or been as formal as we wanted, but there was still a lot of things happening to help us achieve all of the goals of the plan. All of those things that you saw and that you see every month in, in Celeste's report. So it was probably the summer by the time we got back to our formal implementation planning with our activity plans. And um, the management team had a couple different meetings. We were each kind of at different places with our, our activity plans. But I would say what we came up with um, is really a different way of operating for us. It's very um, kind of just pulled together, very collaborative. Uh, everyone can see everything else that everyone's working on. There's a lot of overlap. Um, my department especially works with all the other departments in the library. We all work with each other. And I think using the activity plan um, to see those places where we overlap and, and how we're all trying to achieve the same goals in different ways has been really rewarding for everyone because we have a much better sense of all of the things that are happening at the library. Um, I, I wrote down in my notes here that we were really, um, you know, building the plane as we were flying it. So we didn't have our actual plan, activity plan formalized and in place, but we were using it and it really did help us help guide us through COVID. And, and when we had moments to anchor to those things that we wanted to see happen that weren't pandemic related, we were able to go back to our activity plans and, and keep working on those things. Um, eventually, I consolidated all of those activity plans into one ginormous activity plan. Um, actually, we have them separated by strategic direction because they were just so massive. And rather than um, making you suffer with that huge spreadsheet, we gave you a summary in your board packet this month. And we really focused on more um, near-term things that we're working on. Certainly the activity plan looks out over the next three fiscal years, but it's definitely more focused on the next um, 12 to 18 months because we're constantly updating and changing it. And we regularly at our management team meetings, um, I'll send out an email a couple weeks ahead of the management team meeting and say, okay, it's time to look at your activity plan and highlight anything new, or we have a notes column where we can say, you know, what's in progress or did we have to delay something kind of just where we're at with different things. So it's a way for us to, to um, again, just, operationalize um, the plan. The other piece that you um, had in your board packet is our evaluation framework. And, and again, this is something that was delayed. We had really hoped that by now we would have our first evaluation report for you. And um, we needed to have those activity plans a little further along so that we can really think about, you know, if we're doing these things, what's the result? It's kind of an if-then statement. If we you know, do these different outreach things, then we'll see this result in the community. So we needed a little more time to think about what, what is that information that we can gather? What are those outputs, the things we're actually doing? And what are the outcomes that we're trying to achieve and how will we gather that data? And so you have an evaluation framework that details some of the data that we'd like to gather. Some of it, again, is more near term. We have statistics on lots of things other things we're gonna to need to create, um, different kinds of ways to engage the community through survey data, uh, doing interviews and focus groups, not just part of strategic planning, but to keep up on what people are thinking about our collection and our facilities and just creating more feedback loops so we can continue to learn from our patrons and respond to them. So you, you've seen the um, evaluation framework now, it's, it's got lots of stuff in there. Um, the next step is to figure out, okay, how do we bring all of that data together into a report for the board and for the community that will be meaningful and show not just all the things that are happening, but some actual um, tangible progress towards goals, um, that continuous improvement that we're, we're really working towards. So high level overview, we wanted to show you these documents and give you a chance to ask questions, ask us how it's been going with anything. 
Um, but that's kind of where we're at um, with our, our strategic plan and implementation. Amanda, thanks. Uh, are there questions or comments for Amanda? Beth? Sure, I have a question. First, Amanda, this is great. This is the exact type of thing that you know I was looking forward to seeing. And so it sounds like when you talk about the other, your, your large planner board spreadsheet and you're looking out over a couple of years, my, my one comment or question would be, as you're looking at these metrics, what type of a cycle are you, do you have in mind for you know, the, these circulation trends? Is this monthly, is this annual, um, or will you be doing this you know, on fiscal years, annual years, or have you decided that yet? Yeah. Um, we've had a couple of discussions and, and there's kind of two levels here. One is, have we set any targets? Like, are we trying to increase circulation by X amount? And um, the answer to that right now is not yet because we've been in such a weird year. We don't want to base things necessarily off of the previous year, or this year. So really the first step is just going through and seeing what information we can gather and how do we share that? And then what other instruments do we need to design to get other feedback? Um, our hope, uh, initially our hope was that every six months we would have some sort of report and that it wouldn't be on all of those data points every six months. So it might be, you know, things like circulation trends, obviously those are fairly easy to put together and, and do charts, but things like community feedback on how people feel about the diversity collection are, surveys we have to design and get feedback. So there's a whole process just involved with that piece. Um, so that's kind of the next thing is like, what are things that we feel like we've done enough activities that warrant some feedback from the community about, and then what does that look like for a report? So we're still kind of at the very early stages, but it's definitely on our minds. Okay, great, thanks. Amanda, are these data points common to other libraries of our size? Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, the one thing when I work with libraries around the Midwest, um, this idea of doing these feedback loops is something that um, is really desired and not very well done. And so I'm, I'm using you all as the lab for how can we do this really, really well, because this framework of a community engagement and, um, you know, listening to the community, being responsive, communicating back what you're hearing and changes that you're making I think is super important and I think it's expected from our communities. Um, and I think libraries struggle with that. It's, you know, another layer, it's an extra thing to do. Um, but I feel like we have the skills and tools to do it. So um, yeah, I want to be able to go to other libraries and say, Urbana's doing this and you can too. I, I wanna use you as the lab to um, show other libraries how they can have this kind of dialogue with their community and operate with that data. Seems like the, I mean, most of these would, should be common. They should be uh, you know, monitored by the other libraries so that we can kind of see where people fit, like what's what are industry standards, that sort of thing. Yeah, the data points themselves, like the output data, um, we can definitely get comparison stuff there. It's the, it's the soft stuff, you know, how accessible is our building or how do you feel about programs that we're having that's um, not as commonly uh, gathered. There is a, a public library association has a project called Project Outcome and their whole goal is to help libraries be better at gathering this soft data from their community. So um, I've had some training from them. I've looked at their tools um, you know, we're equipped to do it. It's just a matter of actually uh, launching it. Good. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Just one more comment. I, I think the soft data is actually going to be really important to be a very true measure of what we're, you know, the outcomes, because a lot of the, the, the things listed on the evaluation framework are outcome measures, but I don't know that they will necessarily truly reflect the goals that we're trying to meet so that being able to use to, first of all to obtain the soft data and then be able to interpret that as it relates to our goals and to echo what Beth said I think you know having those targets and I agree that right now it'd be really hard to set a target but having some sort of metric established so we know what direction we're heading in and, and we have something that we're, we're aiming for is, is going to be really important to add to that framework. At least we can be like year over year or period over period, 
at our own facilities, our, our own operations. So be respected of whether others are doing it. Hey, uh, we can use 2020 as a as a low bar. Yes. <laughs> it's gotta get better, That's right? right? Don't, <laughs> don't do too don't do too well. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think what you said, John, about continuous improvement is what's really important. Because there's a lot of things we don't have control over. We can't force people to come get library cards. I mean, we can get the word out in different ways. But ultimately, there's some, you know, self-motivation to do some things. Right. And, and rather, it's like, how are we using the data that we're getting to make changes and, and reach more people? Well, we know you shoot for the stars, even in the first year. Um, okay, any other questions or comments? All right, thank you, Amanda. Uh, let's move on to 7.2 financial updates. Celeste. Hi, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, yeah. I can. Great. I wanted to take just a couple of minutes and go over the report that is part of the board packet every month as part of the director's report, that um, year-to-date budget report in the financial reports on the city's website. Uh, sorry, on our website. We pull it from Munis, our financial system. And um, what we have in here is all the money that we've spent and received so far. So I just wanna hit at a high level some of the pieces. So, you know, we were closed part of this year. We were closed. Um, if you're looking from when the fiscal year started July 1 to now, we were closed a number of weeks. Um, last year, we were, I can tell you, we were closed um, six weeks during the first half of the year. And in fiscal 20, we were actually closed 15 weeks. So when we're looking at budget statistics and as well as circulation statistics and things, everything is just all caterwonky because we did not charge for a number of things for a number of months. So if we didn't charge overdues, you can't expect to get any overdue revenue. So it's been kind of an up and down thing as far as revenue goes, but I wanna let you know, things are looking pretty solid this year um, for fiscal 21. If you were to look at this report, which is again, there's a link in the director's report and it's on the financial page on admin online. Sorry, on your right to know there's a property tax line that is our number one area of revenue and it says that we're funded at 89 percent which might be like a woo woo moment that is awesome except that's not really reflective of this fiscal year the reason it's at 89 percent and not more down like in the 50s where it normally would be this time of year is because last year's last um, tax payment didn't come to us in june it came on July 3rd. So we actually have a bonus, bonus $725,000 in this year's um, property tax line. So it will all straighten out in the end. Last year, we were short by so many hundreds of thousands of dollars. This year, we will be over. It's all going to balance out. But um, so that line looks very, very promising. And that is the reason why is there's this bonus cash in there. If you're looking across the board, um, if things were all spent equally, we'd be at about 62% of spending and revenue. Um, this is really helpful to take a look at because you're gonna see in most areas we're under 62%. There are some parts of the collection where we don't spend evenly. For example, when you pay health insurance, you pay that every pay period. But when you pay for property insurance, you pay that all at once. Or when you buy magazines, you pretty much buy them all at once. So if it, when you're looking at these lines, you have any questions, um, please let me know definitely. If you look at wages though, that's another place where it's gonna be pretty close to that 62% to that line. And in most of the areas we are under, um, we've had some open positions, for example, in admin, we have not hired a security guard. We're pausing on that. We don't need security staff at the library at the moment. We're being very thoughtful about how to approach that whole circumstance. And adult new services, they've only spent out about 52%. IT's only spent about 40%. We have an open position there right now. And the archives had an open librarian position for a while that we had to work through the hiring process. So they're at about 50% spent in wages. So that's gonna help us because as we look at a couple of our other budgetary revenue lines, we're gonna be down. So for example, that library fines and fees line, um, halfway through the year, if we're just looking December, uh, the July through December at 50%, we should have earned about $45,000 in that line for fines and fees. Um, and that includes things like the copier machine and non-resident card holders, purchasing cards, 
and fines, um, but we've only brought in about $21,000, so about half of what's expected. Now, we're not surprised about that. We chose consciously to not have staff interacting with patrons for a while when we first opened and not taking money for the copy machine. Um, sometimes there's a lot of hands back and forth to change. And early on in COVID, we were learning how much is transmitted via the air versus person and being close to each other. So we chose to not charge for copies. It was a small thing we could do for our community. Um, we are not getting as much money in interest. We've been doing really well in interest for a while, which is about $3,000 total for the year, but we've only got 10% um, of the interest we thought we'd get. So we've earned $300 out of the $3,000 we thought we'd earn. So um, I see that the revenue we're not gonna get in fines and fees and notary public service will be offset, more than offset by savings and staffing in other areas. So this is just a high level look at, if you look at these lines, some of them look off. It's no surprise. Um, we made decisions and we kept people safe. Our spending is on target. We're not overspent in different areas, so I'm really pleased about that. And our underspending will help accommodate the um, under revenue. Also, as we think about next year's budget, the city <clears throat> is pacing themselves differently this year. So we are going to bring you a draft budget for fiscal 22. Instead of going March, April, we're gonna go April, May and more firmly align with the city, which has pushed themselves just out of touch. So you will not be hearing from us with a draft budget next month. Okay, Doc. Okay, questions for Celeste. Just, uh, just double checking. So when you project from the negatives and the positives and so on, you end up actually slightly positive compared to typical year, because there's a lot of pluses and minus terms there. It's, um, I am hoping to be breaking even if not a little bit ahead of the game. So for example, the cafe is closed. We lose money every year on the cafe. So in the cafe being closed, we're actually making a little bit of money. Gotcha. Because you're not having to pay anybody to be there. Right, right. And so the downside is people can't use that door. We've closed off a point of access that people like to use. But given COVID and other reasons, it, it seems like it's a fine trade-off. Uh, we don't want people taking a mask down to drink. So we've balanced all the pieces out. And right now, again, we're saving money by not having the cafe, but we're alienating some people who walk to the door and shake it yeah. and may not walk around to come in. Question, with the cafe being closed, um, is there is there, there's different staff that work the cafe than work, what work in the, li in the library staff, or are they integrated in? Like, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes the shelver is scheduled to work the, the, you know, the cafe or something like that. How does that work? Actually, you've got the nail on the head there, Cherise. Our, um, it's a shared position for shelf baristas. And we had a couple of people move on to different opportunities, whether it was a full-time job somewhere else where they moved on to uh, graduate school. So some people left the library and in closing the cafe, but having shelving hours, we were able to get people the hours that they were looking for. Um, since COVID started, no one's been laid off or furloughed and we are still hiring as the needs are. Okay, good. All right. I noticed that the testing, the Sunday testing is back um, every Sunday, the open testing. Yeah, one, once a month we'll be doing that so that when we have a, a position that needs to be filled, we're ready with our candidates. Okay, I might be taking that soon. <laughs> it's an extremely difficult time to budget. I know, we'll see. <laughs> okay, any further questions for Celeste? All right, hearing none, thank you. Let's move on then to item eight, the action items consent agenda. Um, I'll ask for a motion in just a second. This contains uh, board meeting minutes of January 12th, 2021. Payroll for January 15, 2021, totaling 101,784.86. Payroll for January 29, 2021, totaling 97,232, sorry, 97,329.10. 
bills for January 15, 2021, totaling 33,521.48. Bills for January 21, 2021, totaling 10,414.30. Bills for January 29, 2021, totaling 24,422.75. Bills for February 4th, 2021, totaling 20,440 and 30 cents. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, Becky, please call the roll. All those in favor? Barbara Bennett? Yes. Beth Scheid? Yes. Gloria Yen? Yes. Jane Williams? Yes. John Thies? Yes. Lupe Mejia? Yes. Michael Weissman? Yes. Sharice Hersey? Yes. Okay, any opposed? Uh, the ayes have it, the motion carries. Thank you. On to paragraph nine, um, individual items, uh, starting with the display policy, 9.1. So you wanna discuss that? Um, that's my policy that I am bringing to the board. It's an update um, based on a lot of things. So this policy had not been updated since um, I think 1988, I can't remember exactly, sorry. Um, and we 81. had changed, 1981, okay. Um, we had changed a lot of just ways that we handle displays in the building. And also the policy was very specific. As you saw, it named particular places. Some of them existed, some of them didn't exist. And so um, this actually was almost finished before the pandemic and it took me this long to get back to it. But pre-pandemic, I did talk to the American Library Association Office of Intellectual Freedom um, because we wanted to make sure that we were in keeping with uh, best practices for displaying information, allowing space for the public. Uh, so what you're seeing is a much shorter policy. It's now um, it has a different name and um, is maybe more narrow in focus, but also then through our procedures allows us to do uh, more with uh, allowing people to display different things in the library. Um, was this in our packet tonight? Um, unfortunately, no, there was a mix up. So I did actually put it on the website and I emailed it to you this, this afternoon, but- um, Okay. It was- I, I need um, an email to my office address if we get something like that the last minute, because I, I didn't get it. Sorry. Okay. Um, so th this is serendipitous because as Celeste knows, um, I, I you know, coincidentally asked her about this very thing um, recently, the, um, what our display, display policy was. So I'm glad to, glad to see, though I don't have it in front of me, um, uh, I'm glad to see that we're, we have such a thing um, because what, you know, it's keeping with our theme of trying to be the town center, you know, where, where we, we want to be the place where people come and find things that are of significance in the community. So I'm glad to hear that. Okay, um, I, it's an action item. So I, I can't speak to it because I haven't seen it. Um, are, those who have, are there any questions or comments? So just a, just a comment uh, that it, it's very, um, it's very open very free speech oriented. And uh, you know, so if you like that, go for it. If you don't like it, go against it. But that's, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I thought it was really nicely done, actually. I, I was looking to see, was there anything missing? Is there anything that's too much? And I thought it just really is um, very apt for the times we're in. So I, I thought it was good. Um, um, Go, go ahead. I, I was curious. That was you. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask Amanda. Is there a specific reason why we are um, uh, putting up these guidelines now? <laughs> like, if has, if people are trying to put stuff up that is unacceptable or anything like that. No, I would say that really it's just because it hadn't been updated in so long. Um, it's really a best practice to look at all the policies like every three years and update and revise them. This is one that, yeah, some libraries have trouble with this kind of thing. And I would not say that that is our library. Occasionally we get um, business folks who want to put different things up and, and that's not really the purpose of our public display area. It's much more educationally focused. 
Um, but we have a, a process, a review process in place, and um, it seems to work pretty well. And um, I'm regularly kind of going around and just seeing what's up and, and making sure that, um, you know, it's neat and that people can see all of the different things. I don't want this to be like when you go into the grocery store and there's just, you know, flyers all over a bulletin board. We want to make sure people can see um, the information there. And, and our community partners know that we have this space available if they want to put events and things up. So question, could you give me an example of what is, what would be acceptable for display and what wouldn't be acceptable? Yeah. Okay. So we often get like community events. Um, maybe there's a, a theater group. Um, this is pre pandemic, of course. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a preschool screening. Um, something that's not acceptable is a special on an oil change. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> Or some somebody advertising their new business or somebody saying I need a roommate. I don't know, you know. No, nothing like that. I mean, we occasionally will do something that's for profit if it's very community oriented, like maybe a daycare situation, not in, in home, but you know, a preschool, something like that. Um, but and, and occasionally, you know, maybe like a yoga class or something that's again kind of keeping in education. Um, but not, you know, you're selling new lotions or body soaps or you, um, yeah, have a business or, or you're doing, you know, um, Avon or something like that. We, we don't my God that. made Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Right. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, so I, the, so the example that I had raised with you without knowing this was happening was, uh, Kiwanis, a, a service club has, is celebrating its hundredth anniversary and wants to do a display in some central location of all of the great things that Kwanzaa has done for the last hundred years. And so I said, gee, why our town centers are our libraries. Why don't we see if that's the sort of thing we can do there? So I'm hearing you say that kind of, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah, let me know when you want that display case. I'm trying to fill it up now. Okay. Well, there's, there's some big dreamers of things like, how about a video board too? Can you, can we do that? Do we have the capacity to set that up? Maybe, Maybe I'll have to look into that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, anything that gets people to come in, that's what we're, that's what we're looking for. All right. Um, you mean like a big screen TV thing happening, John? Or yeah, I don't, I don't know whether that particular. Um, no, you know, like thing a is what I'm getting at from our standpoint as the library. Right. Is, is there, I'm just thinking in terms of like okay. some kind of a PowerPoint celebrating Girl Scouts of America or something, you know. Like right. A loop, uh, something on a loop. Yeah. Right. Of things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the problem is power and network where our display cases, I'm not sure that we have access to those things or an extra computer. So I don't know, but that sounds really fun. I mean, it's something, an, an addition that we could offer in the future. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions for Amanda? Just to echo that I think that would be great and facilitate kind of virtual submissions of bulletins and different things like that. Yeah, that I totally understand connection challenges. Yeah, they just have kind of like a little PowerPoint. Uh, that's a good idea too, a little PowerPoint type of presentation. I don't know what you would call it, but like you said, on a on a on a loop and you know, you have pictures of like the park district doing something or something. Right. Um, you know. Yeah, the thing about if, if, if you do that sort of you know, kind of multimedia um, idea, you got to make sure that you've always have content. Yeah. But we got, we have to have our, we could have our default library things that, would, that we would, you know, th throw into it so that there's always something to get people's attention. Well, yeah. you know, just what Amanda was talking about before, like you can't make people get library cards, but maybe there's a, maybe if you have something that swings up on this color filled screen that says library card, this is all you got to do, da, 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 you know? Right. Or like I was seeing the Tufel fairy. <laughs> we could do those little videos of the Tufel fairy and you, you can, help from the Tufel fairy only only if you're the host uh, i no i no you've got yeah. plenty of staff we've got plenty of staff that can right. do that kind of stuff all right 
I'll, uh, I'll be the stupid person that doesn't know what I'm looking for. You can play the, yeah, you can act. You can be the, the person <laughs> that doesn't know. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, right. <laughs> we, di we digress. Um, so this is an action item. So is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Okay. I saw a second someplace, so I heard it. I think it was oh, Jane. That was, Jane. was that Jane? Jane. Okay, hi, Jane. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, I, it sounds like a great idea, but I have to abstain because I haven't seen it. So go ahead, Becky, call the roll. Okay. Barbara Bennett? Yes. Beth Scheid? Yes. Gloria Yen? Yes. Jane Williams? Yes. John Thies? Have to abstain. Lupe Mejia? Yeah. Michael Weissman? Yes. Sharice Hersey? Yes. Okay, are there any opposed? I think we got all of us. Um, all right, the ayes have it, the motion carries. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, let's move on to 9.2 fiscal year 21 budget amendment. Celeste, is that you? It's on pages three and four of the director's report. There's just three things. There is uh, moving $725 around to um, pay for a new software program we used for recruiting so we could have interviews um, remotely. And then we received a $78,000 plus gift that we want to add into our gift line as a revenue and an expense. And then we would like to move in conversation with the friends, move $4,500 from the um, purchase furniture line, which we're not going to be purchasing right away, to um, children's book sale line so that we can start a new collection of uh, a new style audiobook that physically has the audio built into the hardcover book. And this is with the friend's permission. So those are the three changes in the director's report. Okay, is there a motion to approve? This is Lisa, I move to approve the budget amendment. And a second? A second. Uh, we'll give this one to Barb. Um, it's been moved and second, is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, Becky, please call the roll. Barbara Bennett? Yes. Beth Shai? Yes. Gloria Yen? Yes. Jane Williams? I'm sorry, Jane, did you say yes? Yes, I said okay. yes. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear you off. Okay, John Thies? Yes. Lupe Mejia? Yes. Michael Weissman? Yes. Sharice Hersey? Yes. Okay, are there any opposed? I don't think so. The ayes have it and the motion carries. Let's go on 9.3, resolution uh, to accept gifts in our materials. And this so we an anonymous gift, right? Yes, just over $78,000. Um, is there any more description we can get than that it's anonymous? Nope. And that it would be from a person's estate and not from some uh, sketchy donor or sketchy like cigarette company or something. Okay, so Celeste, you know you know who the identity of this person? Yes. Okay. Yes, we have the identity, but it's been asked to be not shared. Understood. Uh, I mean, it, it is a very real concern, I think, of ours that we not take money from certain sources. And so there has to be some sort of a safety net um, and that would be, in this instance, staff. So um, is there a motion to approve? I would move to approve the um, gift, the acceptance of the gift. Okay, and is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you. Um, any discussion? All right, Becky, please call the roll. Therese Hersey? Yes. Michael Weissman? Yes. Lupe Mejia? Yes. John Thies? Yes. 
Jane Williams. Jade. Gloria Yen. Yes. Beth Scheid. Yes. Barbara Bennett. Yes. Okay, thanks, Becky. Um, are there any discussion items? Sorry, I didn't call that one. That, my, the eyes have it, motion carries. That was unanimous. Um, and now, are there any discussion items? Seeing and hearing none, let's move on to the reports and the liaison officers. 10.1, the library friends. Barb? I have not been contacted. Celeste, have they contacted you? No, we know they're moving ahead with the Etsy store, but it's not quite up yet. Getting close. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Library Foundation. Celeste, and I also attended my first foundation meeting this last, the last one that they had. But anything, Celeste, that we want to talk about? Um, I think it's good to note that the foundation continues to reach out and build relationships with the community members and that we had our new, um, our new board member start last month and she's very excited and we have our new treasurer continue to be trained up. So capacity building happening. Oh, and I'll be great. talking with you next month about the um, building program process that we have begun to help engage them in the process as well. Okay, thanks Celeste. Uh, Illinois Heartland, Lupe. Um, so nothing to update from an operational standpoint, but from an advocacy standpoint, um, uh, still of course just encouraging member libraries, uh, library staff and um, board members to um, participate in the legislative meetups that are happening this month. Um, and also uh, still working on advocating for uh, library staff to be included in early vaccination. So the 1B and 1C groups. Um, there is a list on ILA's website under the COVID listings of which um, counties have been contacted and kind of responses of who's doing what because it really is happening at a county level or through the, the local um, health departments and making those um, decisions. Um, so still some advocacy opportunities there to participate in. Okay, thanks, Lupe. Administrative report, you've got, um, you have Celeste's report. Anything else to add to that, Celeste? A couple of quick things. The management team met this week with Fred Schliff, the former library director who's working on the building program with us. And Fred will spend um, half an hour with library staff on Monday for our staff day to talk about the building program process and get people excited about it and really be able to connect the dots with how each individual person will be able to contribute to the history and the, the history and the future of our library. What isn't working is the history part and then the future as we move ahead in this process. Also the um, Illinois Library Association legislative meetup for Central Illinois is February 26. And I've sent you information about that. If you're interested in attending, please let me know. Um, Celeste, are we expecting periodic reports from Fred or will we just continue to get them from you? Or how, how will we know how that's progressing? I will definitely keep you up to date, but if you ever want Fred to attend, he has offered to come whenever you'd like him. Well, um, I, it's not, I, I don't think we need to have him anytime real soon because he's doing the background work, um, but it might be interesting to hear uh, you know, another, have another chance to talk to him maybe over the next four months or so. That sounds good. We're developing our timeline right now. We have that um, hashed out is to department meetings versus focus groups with the community and what type of input we're gonna get in writing from people. When we get that broad broad timeline um, developed, we'll share that with you, of course, because Fred will be meeting with you as well as, as a body of people who are interested in this building program process. So hopefully in the next month or so, you'll have a timeline. Great, I think it's very exciting. Um, okay, and then uh, board and committee reports. Do we have any? Seeing and hearing none. Board president report. I have nothing to add. Any unfinished business? I, I don't know if it's unfinished business, but I'd like to make a comment. Go ahead, Sharice. Uh, thanks to um, to 
the library for all of the help that um, you gave the city staff while I was writing up the resolution and, um, and helping them write, help me write that resolution that uh, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, the, it's funny because when I was talking with Will about how to do this, the first thing he thought was the archives in, at Urbana. And so it was magnificent, just all the information that I even still have on my computer <laughs> that, um, I'll probably be sharing little bit by little bit on Facebook, actually, uh, some of the articles that that we got to um, and in writing, you know, for to use for our resources and writing that resolution. Thank you so much. I was really proud of you, Sharice. To, it, it was a wonderful write up and Thanks. I think your tone um, was just perfect. So congratulations on the work you've done. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm glad that we've got a library that's backing you up. Our library rocks, okay? Yeah. I tell people that all the time. We've got the best, better than, than the local libraries when I lived in, in Culver City. And we had a good library in Culver City, but I still think this is, I think our library rocks past them. I'm sorry. I love yeah. Culver City, but no. <laughs> keep, keep shooting for the stars. Hey. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any new business? All right, anything else for the good of the order? I'd say uh, we are pretty much finished. So we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. It's been moved, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I think we, we can declare that the, the, uh, the meeting is adjourned. So thank you very much. <laughs>